Okay. <clears throat> also, mark your calendars. The Waterville Community Bible or Vacation Bible Study is going to take place July 22nd through the 24th at the Zion Lutheran Church, and you can visit our website to register. Okay, we're still calling all 2024 graduates. We will be honoring our high school and college graduates Sunday, June 2nd during the church service. If you're graduating or know of a graduate of a graduate in our congregation, please contact Stephanie Shelton today for, oh, it is the deadline for submission of information. Stephanie, are you here? I can see, but I can't see. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, okay, so if you'll join me in our opening prayer. God of all power, open our ears, our eyes, and our hearts with a spirit of wisdom and revelation. Help us to hear your voice, to see your ways, and to receive with joy your truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Please stand for our first hymn, Breathe on Me, Breath of God. kids come on up we got something to celebrate today okay everybody we got something to celebrate today there we go there we go there's the excitement how are you guys great super all right i love no thumbs down all thumbs up all right do you guys know what today is no no i don't i don't think it's singing day is it no, I don't think so. I wasn't supposed to be here today. By the way, this is a new Ben uh, Long, okay? All right, Ben, uh, just for all of us, we'll be praying for him in a minute, but Ben came down with COVID. And so I found out yesterday at noon. I'm so glad that he didn't tell me seven o'clock this morning. So anyway, so we're gonna pray for Ben, but I'm not Ben, so anyway. So anyway, today, the, everything is all red and yellow and orange. Anybody have any idea what that is for? Okay, well, it's Pentecost Sunday. Pentecost. Can you say that? Pentecost. 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 What does that mean? A couple things. Um, it's it's um, when the Holy Spirit came down upon the um, Peter and the apostles, okay? But it's also what happened when Peter, it came upon Peter. He... Um, born the church the, through the Holy Spirit. So it's kind of like the birthday of the church. So I'm not kidding you. We're going to celebrate today. So let's come up all the way up to the altar. Come on. Come on, let's go up here. Anybody see something different or odd that's on the altar? A cake! So what do you think we're going to do today? Well, wait, you can't blow it out until I 
<laughs> Turn them on. Okay. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to hype you guys all up for multiple reasons. I'm going to let you guys take this cake into children's um, church. And you get cupcakes afterwards. So parents, you're welcome. Yeah. Okay. All right. I know. And they get, tell them they get to have a cupcake too. All right. So we're going to sing. Maybe, maybe I didn't tell Olga, uh, but she's got it down. So let's all stand around the um, cake and we're going to sing what? What do we sing around a birthday cake? And we're going to sing happy birthday to the church. Are you guys going to sing along? All right. Let's, let's begin. Huh? All right, now I'll gather around because I need your hot air. All right, ready? Let's make a wish for the church. What do you think a wish for the church could be? We're allowed to tell it because we're in church. No, but it can act, can it? So how do you think what would be a good wish for our church and for all the churches? I wish it would be um, bigger. Bigger. Yes. You know how that happens? You got to invite somebody. Can you do that? Can you tell a friend, he's like, hey, you got to come to our church because it's cool, right? And you learn a lot about Jesus and we have the best Sunday school, right? Yeah. Okay. Ready? One, two, three. <sighs> <sighs> I was almost like the, the, the sound of the wind on Pentecost. All right. Okay. It does smell bad. Let's pray. Let's, let's gather up and let's pray. All right. Dear God, we love you. We praise you. And we thank you for your precious Holy Spirit and your church. May we not be afraid to ask others to join us in worship. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Who wants to take the cake? Me, me, All right. Okay. okay. Very careful. Very careful. Sorry, Bobby, or whoever's leading today. All right. All right. Thank you. Give us some spirit power. There you go. <laughs>
Kind of makes you want to dance a little bit, doesn't it? Come on. Thank you. Thank you very much. Way to go, choir. Great job. We are going to now enter into our time of prayer, if I can figure out where I'm at with my shirt. There we go. All right. Anyway, um, so um, on the screen, in your bulletin, and um, online, and um, are our continual prayer requests. Can we take the lights down just a little bit? I'm feeling blinded. So, um, so uh, um, we want to continue to keep those people in prayer. As I mentioned, there's a few prayer requests that we have, and first and foremost for Ben. Ben Long was going to preach today. Ben is a certified lay servant, and part of the classes that he takes, so if God is calling you into a deeper um, servant position, there are classes that you can take through our district and our conference in which then you become a certified lay servant. And part of those classes that he takes was a preaching class. And so when he heard that I was going to be gone, I was on vacation this week, um, he said, can I preach? And I said, absolutely. And so um, he's really bummed he could not uh, preach. I happened to just have come back um, yesterday morning a little bit early. And so I came home and uh, took a little nap and woke up and Ben says, I got COVID. I'm like, okay, all right. So um, I was glad he, like I said, I, he didn't tell me that at seven o'clock this morning. So although that would have been fun, wouldn't it? Have? So anyway, so we also have several other um, prayer requests. Um, for um, I'm just going to give a shout out to Kayla Catafias because I redid the sermon. I did. I'm not using Ben's sermon. I'm using a sermon that I had done, and so she always prepares all of the slides. I prepare the slides. She puts them into some magic program, and then they appear on the screen. She came in last night to do that, so I just want to do a shout out and just say thanks to her. She also made the cupcakes, so they're really, really good. So I think she was coming anyways, but then I just add it to the list. So we want to just say thank you for all that she does. Um, <clears throat> also yesterday. I was tired, uh, and um, I got some helium for the balloons up here today, or I went to get some, uh, and I'm, I'm standing in the store, and I have this helium, I have these balloons, I have this string, and this lady in front of me turns and says, oh, you're having a graduation party? I'm like, no, having a party at church, and she's just like, oh, well, that's really cool, so like what, you got some people you're celebrating? I said, uh, yeah, it's Pentecost, and she said, oh, well, give me all your things. And I'm like, what? And she goes, I'm going to pay for it. I feel so bad. I should have known it was going to be Pentecost. How many of you knew Pentecost was today, right? She felt, she, I was like, no, 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 no. Those tanks are not cheap. <laughs> I just kept saying, no, 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 no. I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. And she goes, nope, 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 nope. And it was just interesting how the Spirit, after I was all done, I was just like, wow, Holy Spirit, thank you. I mean, I was just, the, first of all, that it ignited something in her to turn around and to talk to me. And then she didn't run when I said, church, <laughs> okay? So there was something there that sparked something went in, in her. And that, I just so believe that that was the Holy Spirit working in and through her. Of course, I invited her to come today, but she's on her way. she was on her way to vacation to spend time <laughs> in Pennsylvania, exactly where I just came from. And so it was just really funny how it all worked together. But I just wanted to just say, God's everywhere. And the Spirit works in many different ways. And so I believe very much that that was there. And so I just wanted to shout out to her. And uh, we want to pray for Cindy Box. She's having knee surgery tomorrow. Um, for Shirley Johnson, her heart is okay. Woohoo! Hi, Shirley. We know that she's watching. But the surgery has now been moved up to this Tuesday, May 21st. Hallelujah, right? I mean, that poor woman has gone through so much since March, and so she is ready to have her hip surgery. For Char Monroe and Carol Steinhurst, for their surgeries that went well, prayers for rest rest and recovery okay all right so you you can nudge her you're sitting on the right side of her jennifer okay you can nudge her and say rest okay so um and they want to thank everyone for the prayers that they've been receiving so also for our district spring conference this afternoon that's not something that we usually advertise a lot about but what it is it's a pre-conference to the annual conference our district uh the mommy river district does its own little pre-annual conference and so um 
they update us on what is happening and going to be happening in the annual conference, what happened in the general conference, um, p uh, retire pastors that are um, uh, retiring this year, and new appointments within the area. So, um, and we're just going to worship. We're going to worship, and it's Pentecost, so we get to worship with the Holy Spirit. Not that we don't worship with the Holy Spirit every week. So uh, we just want to pray for them and pray for our leaders and the Holy Spirit's guidance in all that we do. And for our church to follow and trust that the Holy Spirit work in and through each and every one of us as we fulfill our mission to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Amen? All right, let's pray. Most holy and gracious God, we praise you for this beautiful sun-filled day, S-O-N and S-U-N. Thank you for this beautiful weather that you're giving us. Thank you for how it's drying up the land for the farmers to be able to go and to plant their fields. Lord, we thank you for the faith of farmers all over this world that rely on you and trust your perfect timing. And Lord, for all the prayer requests that we had placed forth, for those who are going into surgery, recovering from surgery, are dealing with illnesses, Lord, we ask that you hold them in your precious healing arms. Lord, we love you so much, and we praise you for the gift of the Holy Spirit that we're going to celebrate this day. For its guidance in ways that we don't always see. Lord, open our eyes to be able to see more, to see you, to see your spirit, the gift that you have given us as our companion, as our counselor, as our friend, day in and day out to be able to guide us into your plan, to align with your plan, Lord, to do your will. Lord, we praise you and we thank you for all those times in which we feel alone, or Lord, in which we feel that we are uh, despaired and we feel like we can't take one more step. Lord, we thank you and praise you for the way that you act and continue to protect us and love us and guide us and direct us and be with us. Lord, for those who have no hope, for those who don't know you, Lord, for an instructor this past week who tried to convince me there was no God was surprised. And thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit and the guidance of that conversation. And God, we love you so much. And we thank you for all that you are doing and all that you are. And for those, who, um, like I said, who don't know you, Lord, we ask that you use us. Fan the flame within us to go out and to reach more people, to invite people to come worship with us in this beautiful church. Lord, we praise you. We thank you for all that you do. And so now, together, let us say the prayer that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And God, we praise you and thank you for all that we have, all that you have supplied us. We know that all things come from you, Lord. And this is our opportunity to be able to give back because even though we fall short, Lord, you continue to pour out your grace upon us. And so, Lord, as we now stand and praise God for all that you give us, let, us know, let everyone know that it is to you be the glory. Let us stand and let us sing our doxology.
Today's scripture comes from Acts 2. On the day of the Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly there was a sound from heaven like a roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. They were completely amazed. How can this be, they exclaimed. These people are all from Galilee, and yet we hear them speaking in our own native languages. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. You're always welcome to sing along uh, with the words on the screen. Don't be shy. Let the spirit move inside of you.
Okay, now Ben supplied me with a joke, so if it, you don't like it, don't yell at me, okay? <laughs> All right. Ben, I hope you're joining us online, so anyway. Okay, there was this shepherd, and he's out in his field, tending his flock. And this rich man comes along in her, his Mercedes, okay? And he rolls down his window, and he's dressed in this, you know, I don't know, um, expensive brand suits, but they, uh, whatever they, those are, and the ties. I mean, my kids got theirs from Walmart. And so, anyway, you know, and so he's all prestigious, and he leans over, and he goes, I bet you I could tell you how many um, sheep you have out there, but if I do, you need to give me one. Shepherd's like, okay, go ahead. So he pulls out his laptop, and he, he's banging away. He's on the line with NASA and, and the satellites and all this, and he's showing all his prestigious knowledge that he has. And he um, finally finishes up, and he says, you know, I have eight, or 1,500, you have 1,586 sheep. And he's just like, you're correct. And so he goes, choose your animal. And so he chose an animal, bundled him up, and put him into his car. He goes, no, but the shepherd said, no, just wait a minute. He said, if I can tell you what your occupation is, you need to give the animal back. And he says, all right. He said, uh, you're a consultant. And he goes, wow, how did you know that? And he goes, because you told me something I already knew. And he said, uh, so he's, and, and then he said, he goes, you want to get paid for doing that. <laughs> and um, you don't know anything about what I do. So give me my dog back. <laughs> Whoops. I just lost power here. Oh, hold on a minute. See, so much that I lost my power in, uh, in my message. So anyway, let's pray. All right. Oh, most gracious God and glorious King and Messiah, oh Lord, we love you. So glad that your Holy Spirit is always present here. Thank you. As today we celebrate the gift you gave us. May the words that are spoken and the scriptures that are read saturate us and change us and give us that power of the Holy Spirit in our lives too. We praise you and we thank you. We'll give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, today is Pentecost. And if you don't know, it occurs um, seven weeks or 50 days after Jesus' resurrection. Pentecost is also known as the birthday of the church as we celebrate it with the kids. Remember, cupcakes for everyone after the service, okay? Now, in the book of Acts, before Jesus ascended into heaven, he instructed the disciples to stay in Jerusalem until the coming of the Holy Spirit. From Acts 1.8, Jesus says these final words to his disciples. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnessing, telling, witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, in Samaria, in Waterville, and to the ends of the earth. Jesus was then taken up to heaven. He had previously promised to send the Holy Spirit to comfort and to guide and to lead his disciples after his death. Then shortly after Jesus' ascension, it speaks of how Peter stood in front of 120 believers, speaking of how the scriptures had been fulfilled. And then this um, from our scripture today in Acts 2. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were um, sitting. Then, what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. Now, these believers and the disciples 
couldn't help themselves, and they spilled then all out into the streets. They were filled with the Holy Spirit, especially Peter, so filled with the Holy Spirit that um, they began proclaiming the good news of God with even more vigor and excitement. And they did so um, in languages that they didn't know before, the languages of the foreign Jews, praising and glorifying God. Soon, a huge gathering of people came. Some mocked this display, saying the followers were drunk. Then Peter spoke up courageously, even though not too much early, earlier he was fearful of being arrested, if you remember Peter's story. And then he gives this first sermon to the newborn church, and it's found in Acts 2. Now, that's your homework, okay? Write it down. Acts 2, you're going to read Peter's um, first sermon. Sometime this week, please do that, okay? But however, here's the conclusion and the response from Acts 2, 36 through 41. So let everyone in Israel know for certain that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, to be both Lord and Messiah. Peter's words pierced their hearts. And they said to him and to the other apostles, brothers, what should we do? And Peter replied, each of you must repent of your sin and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is to you, to your children, and to those far away, all who have been called by the Lord our God. Then Peter continued preaching for a long time, strongly urging all his listeners, save yourselves from this crooked generation. Those who believe what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day, about 3,000 in all. That's exciting. That's really exciting. So despite the risk of being arrested and even put to death, we see this courageous Peter come forth, and he comes forth boldly. Peter proclaimed that Jesus was both Lord and Christ and the long-awaited Messiah. And Jesus, not Caesar, was the ruler, and not just of Israel but of all people. This was a, okay, how dare he do that? He called the people, the, li the listeners to repentance, to recognize the way they had turned from God's path, to yield their hearts and their lives to God, asking for forgiveness and pledging to follow Christ. And as we read, 3,000 people said yes to the Lord and became part of Jesus' church. Okay, do you remember how many were at the beginning? 120. Now, 3,000. That's exciting, right? That's an example for us. I'm just letting you know that, okay? All right, so, so clearly there is power in the Holy Spirit. I would like to share this story that reminded me um, of this power, of just power. My son had bought me a couple flats of flowers, okay? He does that often. And we use this cordless dr drill with an auger like on it. I even brought it because I so love this drill. Look at that. Okay. All right. So this thing, you go in like this and it goes, and it digs the hole for you. I want to dig 1,000 holes, you know? So I was so excited. Okay. So we, um, we, he used this. Well, Sean went to use it and it was dead. And he's like, Mom, you need another battery. So I went and got another battery because he had told me, go get multiple batteries for your little screw gun thingy, um, uh, drill, whatever we call it. Okay. And someone told me, I have an old craftsman. I don't know what's old and what's new. Okay. But anyway, so he says, Mom, this one's dead too. So I go and get another one. Mom, dead. So anyway, um, uh, he, um, we took a break, got some wings or something or whatever, whatever we do, and enough time to recharge the battery. Why am I telling you this? Besides, it's a really cool gadget. My point is, is the drill had the potential to do the job very easily. Yet without charged batteries, it was nothing more than an expensive paperweight. As Christians... This is how many of us are living our lives. We fall, we fail to invite the Holy Spirit to empower us. We fall short in practicing the spiritual disciplines of prayer and worship and scripture reading and silence and solitude. 
This is what brings us power. Holy Spirit power. If we're not careful, we could live spirit anemic Christian lives. Without the Spirit's power, we live impotent, sometimes cowardly Christian lives. But with the Spirit, we have power to spread the gospel, to make new disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. We are meant to be spirit-filled, spirit-led, and spirit-empowered lives. Our job is to invite the Holy Spirit in, to be plugged into that power, to be supercharged by the Spirit and not let our lives fall dead to the Spirit. We got power. All right, so after you all buy one of these, all right, and you're out there working on it, I want to hear people. I got Holy Spirit power. Holy Spirit power. Holy Spirit power. See, the Holy Spirit worked in and through Peter, and the Spirit does the same in each and every one of us. See, Christ's resurrection clearly changed Peter's understanding of who Jesus was, the kind of kingdom he was ushering in. And it was the power of the Holy Spirit given to Pentecost that enabled Peter to become the rock that Jesus foretold him to be. From Pentecost on, Peter, with the Spirit moving in him and through him, was used to, by God to do amazing things, acts he had not done before, things that he only saw Jesus do. The book of Acts is full of the ways God used Peter through the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. It shows how Peter did amazing, bold, and courageous things. For example, in Acts 3, Peter and John were going to the temple for an afternoon of prayer and encountered a crippled, lame man since birth. Let's read about it from Acts 3. Peter and John looked at him intently, and, and Peter said, Look at us, the lame man looked at them eagerly, expecting some money. But Peter said, I don't have any silver or gold for you, but I'll give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, get up and walk. Then Peter took the lame man by the right hand and helped him up. And as he did, the man's feet and ankles were instantly healed and strengthened. He jumped up, stood on his feet, and began to walk. Then walking, leaping, and praising God, he went into the temple with them. Can you imagine? Since birth. And don't you just love it how the man was walking and leaping and praising God? Yes, right? Woohoo! I would be doing the same. I think all of us would be doing the same. You know, we can relate to this man spiritually. Where sp we're sp spiritually broken and crippled and lame. But in knowing Jesus Christ, we find healing and hope and the ability to walk and leap and praise God. We become whole again in light of God's work in us. In the temple courts, think about this. Others came to meet this man. They had seen him there his whole life. And they marveled that he could now leap and dance there at the place called Solomon's Porch. Once again, Peter begins to preach to the crowd boldly and courageously. So I got more homework for you. His second um, uh, sermon is in um, chapter 3, verses 12 through 36. That's the second recorded sermon of the newly formed church. So you got lots of homework this week. Peter had uh, been afraid of the religious leaders just weeks before, but here he stands in broad daylight, boldly and courageously in the temple courts in full view of all the religious leaders. He did not hold back. Then listen to what happens to Peter and John in Acts 4. While Peter and John were speaking to the people, they were confronted by the priest, the captain of the temple guard, and some of the Sadducees. Those leaders were very disturbed that Peter and John were teaching the people that through Jesus there is a resurrection of the dead. They arrested them, and since it was already evening, put them in jail until morning. But many of the people who heard their message believed, so the number of men who believed now totaled about 
5,000. You gotta love church growth, right? Amen? All right. The next day, Peter and John stood before the very council that had condemned Jesus to death. But this time, Peter did not deny Jesus. No, no way. Not again. He learned from his mistake. And Peter boldly proclaimed, this lame man had been healed because of the name of Jesus, who was crucified, but, ro but God rose from the dead. The religious, religious leaders were surprised that Peter and John, these uneducated fishermen, were so bold and confident, were able to stand before the court with confidence. The council demanded that they stop preaching and teaching in the name of Jesus. We know that that didn't work. And Peter and John responded in Acts 4, 19 through 20 with this. Do you think God wants us to obey you rather than him? We cannot stop telling about everything we have seen and heard. Do you see the impact of the Holy Spirit on these disciples? Let me ask. Have you ever felt or experienced something so incredible that you just had to share it with others? Come on. I see many grandparents out there, and I know you have no problem speaking of your grandchildren. You're, some of you are my friends on Facebook. I know. I know it's true. Okay? You can't help it. The excitement bubbles out of you and you just want to share that with everyone around you. That is how Peter and the, the apostles felt about Jesus' impact on their lives. So profound and empowering. Peter had to share it. He couldn't stop talking about it. The Holy Spirit directing and guiding him. So how about you? Has your faith impacted you in this way? Has your experience with the risen Christ been so life-giving that you had to share it with those around you? Have you um, been so filled with the Spirit that you had to tell others about your faith? And maybe you shared it on social media, on Facebook, Instagram, and many other facets. Do you know a 2021 survey asked people who attended, who did not attend church, if someone they respected invited you to church, would you go? I shared this statistic another time, but I'm going to share it again. Do you know the response was 82% of the people would, would go to church? So what are you waiting on? Just as I asked the kids, I'm going to ask you. Invite somebody. Pick them up. Bring them. Let the, let the Holy Spirit work. All you got to do is bring them here. And we let the Holy Spirit do all the other work, right? But people's lives are changed if you just ask, if you just invite. How bold and courageous are you to let others know you are a disciple of Jesus Christ. I'm not asking you to beat them over the head with a Bible, okay? That is, that's abuse, okay? Don't do that, all right? But simply ask them if they would like to join you and go to church with you. St. Francis of Assisi has been known to say, preach the gospel at all times. Use words when necessary. It's easy to preach the gospel by actions, but we get nervous when we're um, called to use our words. We must be ready to describe our experiences of his love and his mercy, to share our God stories. Do you live in such a way that people know that you're even a Christian? Do people even know that you go to church? Have you told somebody about it? Is your faith one that would lead them to want to know more? Good deeds and ability to share faith with others is important. And Peter tells us about this in his own letter, in his own epistle. He says this from 1 Peter 3. Instead, you must worship Christ as Lord of your life. And if someone asks about your hope as a believer, always be ready to explain it. But do this in a gentle and respectful way. Keep your conscience clear. 
Then if people um, speak against you, they will be ashamed when they see what a good life you live because you belong to Christ. Are you ready? Equipped to share your testimony of Jesus, your Savior? In Acts chapter 5, the Christian faith was spreading in remarkable ways. Peter was not only the rock, he was a rock star. Listen to this from Acts 5, where we see, yet more and more people believed and were brought to the Lord. Crowds of both men and women, as a result of the apostles' work, sick people were brought out into the streets on beds and mats so that Peter's shadow might fall across some of them as he went by. Crowds came from the villages around Jerusalem, bringing their sick and, and those possessed by evil spirits. And they were all healed by the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit working through Peter. Is that not incredible? Yes, that's a woohoo, right? Absolutely. Do you see that this is the Holy Spirit power completely engulfing Peter and the other disciples? And Peter participated. He participated in the same, some of the same work that Jesus Christ did. He was able to heal. And miracles of compassion and healing served to open the door um, to Peter proclaiming the gospel. Can you imagine being healed just by the shadow of Peter? You're going to want to know what's going on with this guy, right? The same is with you. It is possible for both you and me to be able to do those kind of things if we rely on the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Now, the power of the Holy Spirit continued to be contagious, bringing people to Christ. Don't believe me? This is what it says in Acts um, 9. The news spread through the whole town, and many believed in the Lord. The power of the Holy Spirit works in and through all people, including you and me, and your neighbors, and your friends, and your enemies, and your kids, and your teachers, everyone. You see, if Peter, the rock, would not have accepted the power of the Holy Spirit to proclaim who Jesus is, we would not have the followers of Jesus that we have. Those followers would not have, would have just remained this small sect of people. So think, so just think. There is that same power in each and every one of us to go out bravely, moved and guided by the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit to bring people to Christ. It's in you. It's in every single one of us. However that may look, I'm a little bit bolder. But it may be a silent, silent uh, conversation or a, a simple conversation over a cup of coffee. Peter's words and influence paved the way for Christian faith to spread across the Roman Empire and around the world, all by God's Holy Spirit living in and through him to others. God offers the same and does the same for all of us through the powerful and mighty Holy Spirit. So we, as we proclaim the Holy Spirit this Pentecost, let's invite the Spirit into a deeper presence within us. Let's ask the Holy Spirit to light that fire, to fan that flame, Something inside of us. We all have it. We all go, oh, what is that? Fan it. Fan it. Ask God to fan it. Ask the Holy Spirit to work bigger. And who knows? Just as that lame man received, you too may experience the same Holy Spirit power and have this running, leaping, dancing, and praising of God that is in you that you just can't contain. I dance right now, but I'll probably fall over, okay? But who, who knows? We, we have it in us. There should be this joy and inside of us that we get to tell people about Jesus Christ. We get to tell people how he changed our lives and how day in and day out, the Holy Spirit 
our companion, our friend, our counselor is with us and making a difference in our lives. Do you trust the voice of the Holy Spirit? Let's pray. Most holy and gracious God, again, we praise you and we thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit, your presence with us every day, guiding and leading us and directing us. And God, we ask that you fan that flame within in us. Help us, Lord, to not hold back, to be able to tell others, to invite others, to share our stories with others. Holy Spirit, work in each and every one of us so that in all things that we do and all things that we, can, we say, we can give glory and honor to God, not us, but to the King of kings and the Lord of lords, our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We're going to sing. Kayla, come on up. We're going to sing the song, Spirit of the Living God. And I'm going to invite you to hold out your hands, to receive what this, this song is that we're singing. And who knows, there may be a breeze that comes upon you. Let's stand. Let's sing. Thank mm -hmm. you. glory go to you. Stir in us, God. Stir in us your spirit to change the world, to help make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of our world. Lord, we need you now more than ever. Help us. Give us strength. Give us power. Your power through the Holy Spirit. So go in peace. Go love on your neighbor. And go be the church. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Have a great week, guys. God bless you.